This video is going to introduce you to the idea of direct proportion. Now, a classic example of direct proportion is a recipe. Let's imagine that we've got this recipe which requires 400 milliliters milk for two milkshakes. We could write a table which was the number of milkshakes and the amount of milk. And it would be quite easy you can see quite quickly um, two milkshakes is 400 mils of milk be quite easy and quite simple to start filling in other values in this table for example you could half the recipe you could make one milkshake which would require 200 uh, mils of milk you could make three milkshakes then so if you did the recipe for one milkshake and two milkshakes three milkshakes would be 600 mils, 4 milkshakes would be 800 mils, and 5 milkshakes would be 1000 mils of milk, etc. And what you can see here is that there is a link between these two numbers. If you multiply by 200 every time, you will get the amount of milk needed. So this is kind of like a shortcut way, rather than having to build up and follow the pattern until you get down to, let's say you wanted to make um, 55 milkshakes, okay, you wouldn't want to carry on your pattern to count down to 55, all you do is you times by 200, and if you do that on a calculator, 55 times 200, you get 11,000, so you'd need 11,000 milliliters or 11 liters of milk. So this idea that um, you can multiply one number by a fixed amount, 200 in this case, to get the other number, is the key idea behind direct proportion. And in fact, um, for direct proportion, we always write down um, a formula in this format, A equals KB, just like that. Okay. So if we use A is the number of milkshakes, and we use B is the amount of milk we can put some numbers into this formula and work out the value of K okay and that's the basic idea behind direct proportion you are starting out with um, a formula that looks like this one number equals K times another number that K is going to be called a constant of proportionality and you need to find that in order to work out the rule that is going on here. So let's have a look at our algebraic rule here. We could say that, let, let's take one particular pair of numbers. Let's say we know that one milkshake is made using 200 milliliters of milk. So if I just write that down there, what I've done is I have substituted one for the number of milkshakes. K is the constant of proportionality I'm going to work out. And B, the amount of milk, was 200. So I substituted that into my formula as well. Um, and then if I divide by 200, both sides of this equation, like this, I will get K on its own there, and I will get 1 divided by 200 in this column here. 1 divided by 200, you could write as a fraction, I'm going to write it as a decimal like that. So the key thing here now is that we've got a formula, we've got a formula where we know that A stands for the number of milkshakes, K is this number here, and B stands for the number of milliliters of milk that we will require. So if you look at the process I've gone through there, I've started out with a formula with a K in it, I've substituted in values of A and B, and then I've worked out my value of K and I've re-substituted that back into my original equation. So now I have got a complete formula linking 
A and B. So the key points, I guess, for direct proportion are these. If you are if you're told that something is directly proportional, you will be able to know a few things. First of all, um, if one number or quantity is zero, the other is zero. And in my milkshakes example, um, that would correspond to, well, if I was making zero milkshakes, then I would need zero milk. All right. The second sort of quality of direct proportion is that if one quantity is doubled or tripled or quadrupled, but we'll stick with double for a moment. If one quantity is doubled, the other quantity is doubled as well. And that corresponds in this recipe example. If I uh, made twice as many milkshakes, I would need twice as much milk. And the third, and this is really the key thing, um, is that when you've got direct proportion, the two variables, the two things that are going to change, are always related by a formula in this format. And I always put it in a box to make it stand out. It's key. Okay, that is the key point behind direct proportion. Uh, one quantity is equal to k, a constant, multiplied by the second quantity. That is always the case in direct proportion. So let's have a look at how you actually apply this to um, some questions. Here is a question. It says x varies directly with y. Varies directly is another way of saying direct proportion. If x equals 17.5 when y equals 7, find a, x when y equals 9, and b, y when x equals 30. Well, this type of question is really, really standard. Um, what you need to do before you even start part a is you need to take this information here in the first sentence. Okay? First of all, x varies directly with y. That means that you're going to be able to write a formula like that, x equals k multiplied by y. Okay, that's the first thing that you should notice. When you see varies directly or is directly proportional to, you need to be thinking about that formula. Then it gives us a second piece of information. If x equals 17.5 when y equals 7. So this means that we can put two numbers into this formula. 17.5 at the same time that y equals 7. So I'm simply substituting um, x is 17.5 and y is 7. And now what I can do is I can work out that value of k. Remember in the milkshake example, <coughs> I had to work out the value of k before I could say I've worked out my formula. So this time I want to divide by that 7 there. So k is going to equal 17.5 divided by 7. And if I do that on my calculator, that gives me 2.5. And now, what I want to do is just rewrite that formula using my value of k. Like that. So now I've got this formula. I haven't even started answering part A yet, really. What I've been doing is I've been working out the formula that I'm going to use in part A. So this formula contains an x, which is the number, I don't know, let's, let's imagine that we're doing the recipe question again, that would be the number of milkshakes, and y might be the number, the amount of milk needed. Okay, there are two quantities that are going to vary, they're going to change. But this 2.5 is the linking number, the number in between them. So let's have a look at part A now. So part A is ready to be solved. Once we've worked out a formula, we can actually start to substitute some numbers in. So we want to work out the value of x when y is equal to 9. Let's use this formula here. x equals 2.5 multiplied by 
the y value which for part a is 9. So 2.5 multiplied by 9 is going to give you 22.5. Pretty straightforward. The second part, part b, requires a little bit more effort. We've got to work out the value of y when x equals 30. So again, starting from my formula, I know that the x value is 30. And the y value this time is what I'm trying to work out. So keep the same order that you have in the formula. x equals 2.5 times y. 30 equals 2.5 times y. That's what I've written there. Now I need to get rid of this times by 2.5. So I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 2.5. And I should get the answer, y equals 30 divided by 2.5, which is 12. So I've got my two answers there, part A, 22.5, and part B, 12. Key point really is, first of all, before you can even start working on A and B, you've got to work out this formula. You've got to get this formula. You've got to know the value of k, the constant of proportionality. Let's just have a look at a worded question as the last thing we're going to do today. The, the distance covered by a train is directly proportional to the time taken for the journey. The train travels 105 miles in three hours. What distance would a train cover in five hours? So again, let's use these words here. We've got directly proportional. So we know that two things are going to be directly proportional. What are those two things? Well, the distance covered, so I'm going to use a D and the time taken, so and a t. So I'm going to write that d equals k t. Like that. Then it says the train travels 105 miles in three hours. So I can substitute those numbers in. 105 miles for three hours. So the distance is 105, and the time is 3. It's the same process I was going through before. I'm now going to work out the value of k. By dividing by 3, and I think that is going to make 35. OK, so the final thing to do is write in another box here our formula. OK, and I've just replaced that k with the value that we know it to be equal to. So d equals 35 multiplied by t. The distance covered is 35 multiplied by the time taken. So now we can go and we can answer part a. Part a says what distance will the train cover in five hours? So we go back to the formula. D is equal to the distance is 35 times by the time taken, 5 hours. So you get 35 times 5, which is 175 miles. Don't forget to include your units. OK, and part B says, how much time will it take for the train to cover 280 miles? So this time, we're starting with the distance, which is 280. It's equal to 35 multiplied by the time. That's what we're trying to work out. So we're going to divide by 35. And if we do that, 280 divided by 35, I get 8 hours. So let's just review what we've done there and in the previous question. Every time when answering questions like these, um, we've gone from a general formula, which has got a k involved in it, to a specific formula for our situation, which, where we've worked out the value of k. And then we've used the formula in a couple of different situations.